Hello, this is Mrs. Shanahan, and this is going to be a very sh brief tutorial on uh, doing fluid resuscitation calculations in the burned, injured patient. Um, and this is under the concept of tissue integrity. Uh, remember when we talk about burns that we talk about skin and so we are worried about skin that is no longer intact or can no longer provide the patient with the functions of the skin that they are used to. So an important point to remember when we do burn calculations is that superficial burns, i.e. burns of the epidermis only, are not calculated in the burn injury calculation for fluid resuscitation. Um, if I have skin in, that is intact, i.e. superficial burn, epidermis only, I still maintain all the functions of the skin so that the uh, fluid requirements of that patient are not changed in any way. If we're going to fluid resuscitate a patient, we need to know what we need to assess afterward to see if our intervention is working. And the way we assess adequate fluid resuscitation in the burn patient is um, we're looking at things in a little greater volume than we are in a regular patient. Um, and the reason is because we have such massive fluid shifts in the burn patient um, into the interstitial spaces and outside of the body because of the loss of the skin integrity um, that we are looking for a higher urine output that we would usually look for in a patient. So 30 to 50 ml an hour for an adult patient. And an electrical burn, because we are unable to determine an adequate body surface area because of the nature of the electrical burn, i.e. it's inside the body and it tracks the bone, um, therefore we cannot accurately calculate a percentage of body surface area. We're really looking at a much higher urinary output to determine adequate fluid resuscitation in these patients, 75 to 100 mLs an hour. Also remember from reviewing the PowerPoint, on burns is that we have a permissive tachycardia that we allow our patients to have in burns and so that a heart rate up to 120 is considered normal for the burn patient. So once their heart rate gets to 120 or below, we can start making the decision that we've getting to adequate fluid resuscitation in that patient. So their heart rate less than 120 and an adequate urine output, i.e. 30 to 50 mLs an hour in an adult or an electrical burn, 75 to 100 mLs an hour, then our patient has received adequate fluids. In a burn patient, we do like to have a really good handle on their fluid volume and so we have a use of hemodynamic monitoring. So most of these patients, especially our severely burn patients, will have a swan gants or central venous is pressure monitoring available to them and we're looking at their tank being full which is something we talked about in cardiology. So now you have your rule of nine, which is an estimation of body surface area injured. Uh, it is quick and dirty and done acutely. Remember that there's a much more accurate burn chart that is available once the patient were, uh, reaches a definitive care at a burn center or a trauma center. Um, but for initial fluid resuscitation, and this is what you'll be responsible for in NUR 210, is this rule of nines. So if I have, if I'm looking at the body as divided into areas of nine percent. I need to have 11 of them, and 9 times 11 is 99%, and then we have that 1%, which is the genitalia or the perineal area in both the male and the female. So your rule of nines is the head is one area of 9%. The entire arm back in front, an area of 9%, the other arm back and front an area of 9%. Now what we consider your torso goes from your neck to your pelvis and a torso is divided into two areas of 9%. So you have the chest area and the abdominal area. Both of those are 9%. So if you're talking about an entire torso, that is 18%. And then the same is true on the back. The back is divided in upper torso and a lower torso, each of those equivalent to 9% body surface area. Now your legs, because they're much bigger than your arms, are divided into the front or interior portion of the leg is 9% and the posterior or the back of the leg from the hip to the toes is considered 9%. So a total, a, a burn that encompasses the entire leg is considered 18%. So now let's add them up. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 areas of 9%. There is also a, a little thing that we look at and that's the size of the patient's palm is equivalent to 1% of body surface area. So if the burn is greater than a superficial burn and it's the size of the patient's palm, it is considered 1%. The genitalia is also 1%. So um, please read your questions. At, 
think about what they're asking, an entire leg would be 18%, but an entire arm only 9%, and a one, an area of the palm, size of the palm of the patient's hand is 1%. So now we need that information to plug into our Parkland formula or our amount of fluid needed to resuscitate a burn patient. Um, yes, you do need to memorize the formula. So you're going to figure out the total body surface area using your rule of nines, um, and you're going to times that times 4 mLs, and then you're going to times that by the patient's weight in kilograms. Um, remember that we are only including partial and full thickness burned areas in total body surface area. You're going to get a large number, 10 thousand mls, 20,000 mls, and I know we talked before when you're doing med math and looking at the amount of volumes that we give patients that your number should be small. In the area of burns, your number is going to be large. So for example, if you had a patient that had 4 mls of body surface area burned, I'm sorry, if they had 10 percent of a partial or full thickness total body surface area burned, and they weighed 75 kilos, you would have 4 times 10% times 75, that's their weight in kilos, and you're going to get 3,000. So they need to get 3 liters of fluid. The way that we're going to infuse this fluid is we're going to divide our total number in half. So we would have 1,500 mLs. The patient is going to receive 1,500 mLs in the first 8 hours from the time of injury. The rest of the fluid will then be infused over the following 16 hours. So they get half the first 8 hours, and then they get the other half the last 16 hours. Um, so you do need to be aware of this, and we will play around with it a little bit in our time in the classroom. After 24 hours, the capillary begins, beds begin to stabilize. The patient regrains their intravascular volume, and then oftentimes if they're adequately fluid resuscitated, i.e. based on their heart rate and their urinary output and or swan gans or CVP numbers, um, we will switch the fluid from warm to lactated ringers to D5 or 5% dextrose. So again, there's the way we determine if our patients are adequately fluid resuscitated. You'll be responsible for your rule of nines. So we have 11 areas of the bodies that are worth 9% apiece, and then that 1% is the genitalia area, and then um, we're looking at urinary output and a heart rate less than 120 to determine that our patient has been adequately fluid resuscitated. So I hope this helps, and this is a good review for you for your um, exam on tissue integrity. Thank you.